What? No. Think about it. Blue beats red. No. no. Why I think about this, Cam? Who do you got? <laughs> First off, winning the winning the the match between Red and Sky. And, and then who do you got in the triple threat? I got to think about this for a minute. What he's what he's referring to. You need to remember, Sean. It's almost midnight here. It's not like we don't we don't have the comfort of it being almost nine o'clock at night. It's a first round you know. of the show. First, I disagree with both of you. I think Chris Tylander and Hartel Rain has not been boring. I think the reason that Hartel Rain has not been the greatest is solely because of of politics, backstage politics. I think they have kept her off television on purpose because of that. So a good chunk of her title, title reign has been pretty much sabotaged. And I think it's all due to backstage politics. But what I've had what I have seen from Chris Dylander on collision and on the last couple of pay-per-views has been some good stuff. So I definitely like Chris Dylander as champion right now. She she dropped the alien gimmick She's been more serious. So I like her style right now. Currently, I do. I think she's hitting a ceiling, and I think she's pretty much done all she can do with that belt. So I definitely think that her her time is coming to drop the championship. Now, as far as why I think it's going to win between Red Velvet and Sky Blue, it's definitely going to be Sky Blue, because Red Velvet right now isn't involved in any sort of storyline or anything like that. She just came back. And the the meat and bones of this triple threat match is with Sky Blue and Julia Hart. So I believe you're going to see Sky Blue beat Red Velvet, and it's going to be Julia Hart versus Chris Tylander versus Sky Blue. And I think based off of the story, you're going to see a, a double swerve, and you're going to see Sky Blue probably spit the mist at Statlander and help Julia Hart win the TBS championship. And you're going to see a new TBS champion, Julia Hart. See, this is what I have for my extra point. That's your extra point, right? You're saying that's your extra point? Is that uh, Sky Blue, the double swerve where Sky Blue helps Julia? Okay, so my extra point is an X factor that we don't have in the match and will Nightingale. She may inadvertently cost Sky Blue the, the match. And, and then Sky Blue turns on is what leads to Sky Blue turning on Willow Nightingale and going fully. I would like to say it, it's going to be corny, but dark blue. Like, <laughs> so your ultimate is Willow costs Sky Blue at the pay per view, but then future storyline is is Sky Blue and uh, gets pissed at Willow and turns on Willow. Yeah. Okay. So, but your pay per view extra point is Willow turn, um, costing. Yeah, her. so she goes from sky blue to dark blue. <laughs> Come on, nothing's hidden tonight. What the no, fuck? Y'all can't pop. God. Blue. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I don't. To build off what Cam said, though. I will say this. Number one, I miss Chris, Chris, Chris Statlander's alien gimmick. I actually like that gimmick. As far as the backstage politics, I can agree on that too. And I've said it before. They have missed the boat with they have missed the boat with Chris Statlander. I think it's they they kind of went a little too late with putting a title on her. They're doing the same with Ruby Soho. They're putting her in championship matches. But they're putting her in championship matches and just having her lose. Like, why are you doing that? Like, have her finally win. Even if it is the, the women's championship, the women's world title. They're passing that thing around like a freaking pancake right now, anyways. Just for example, we're getting Sheeta against Tony Storm at full gear. I have a feeling I know the answer to this one. Gentlemen, who do you got? Tony Storm, Hika Rushida. It's it's a no-brainer. It's Tony Storm for sure. Uh it, it's kind of unfortunate for Rashida. Uh, you know, I was kind of hoping they had something else planned for long term, but 
I mean, it's obvious right now. It's like pretty much their their most heavy advertised gimmick right now is with Tony Storm and this whole timeless thing she's doing right now. And I'm I'm personally loving it. Like it's it's goofy, it's ridiculous, but it's entertaining at the same time. And I'm all about the evolution of gimmicks and because that I mean that's that's a big part of wrestling, right? Is the gimmicks. So and we don't really have a lot of those anymore. Not like we used to. So I'm all I'm all for it. This is the most the, I say it all the time, but it was the most character development that we've ever seen from Tony Storm in years, probably. So I'm all for it. And if they put the title on her again, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm for it. Um, I don't know if I want to see a a long reign necessarily, just because I mean she already had the title and she had a pretty decent sizable reign. Um, I think she's I honestly think if if she does a placeholder for Tony, I think Tony is a placeholder for Jamie Hader when Jamie Hader comes back. Yeah, because so. she's almost around that time of coming back too. She has been gone almost. I think what like eight months she's been gone. Yeah. She's been gone for a while now. Yeah, so we're so I, close I, to that I, time for coming back. Yeah, so I, I definitely think I think definitely think Jamie Hader is going to be one of the one of the ones to beat Tony Storm for the title. But yeah, I'm going with uh, Tony Storm. I mean, I I said it, I said it about a week ago, maybe a little sooner than that, or earlier this week. I said it, and I know I, I caught people by surprise by saying this. As much as I'm not a fan of Tony Storm, not a fan of her at all, she's doing right by this gimmick. She's doing good things with it. She's obviously entertaining with it. The only thing that throws me off again is when they go into that pitcher and pitcher, why she's doing her silent, her silent pitchers. Yeah. Like back in the day when there were silent pitchers, there used to be music to them just to keep people attention. You don't want to have nothing coming through so do that play some type of like old school like 1920s you know piano bar music while she's doing her silent show like you're doing commercials during her silent movies and some of the commercials are more entertaining and more eye-catching than her silent movies And that sucks. That sucks for her when you have people saying that. Like, I don't know how many other people agree with me. But I, I, mean, I honestly it, catch the attention of the commercial sometimes more than her silent movies. It, it could be worse. She could have a pizza cutter during a, a Domino's commercial. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was bad. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think it was a perfect advertisement. <laughs> now, do you do you think they had that timing right? Like, do you think that was coincidental, or do you think that no, was no, that was on purpose? It had to be. Okay. okay, I think it was coincidental. I don't think AEW knows like what commercials are going to play. Yeah, but they can set something up with the network where, like, hey, if you play this spot during a commercial, we'll do this because they have to relay to the the you know tv studio like hey this is the plans for the show tonight just to let you know you know they have to relay that stuff plus plus, so plus, it was, plus, plus like he's plus like i said you you know these companies you know they're not dumb like they they pick these oh, television no. shows that get a lot of ratings to play yeah. these commercials for yeah so they probably already knew when they were going to play what when and during what commercial time break and all this other stuff like that so I don't think it was a coincidence at all. Yeah, because they can give a rundown because some shows do get sponsored by certain products. So, for example, like if they're, they're you know, sponsored by DraftKings, you know, they obviously they do commercials for them, but they do something like during a pitcher and pitcher where there's like some type of gambling thing happening or something, you know, just as a little thing. But they give them a rundown of like, hey, we're playing this ad, this ad, this ad, this ad, and this ad during your commercial breaks for pitcher and pitcher. Good way to set something up. Very good way. But Sean, who are you going with? Sheeta, Tony Storm. 
I'm going with Tony Storm. Um, and I'll tie in to revisiting her feud with Soraya and, and Ruby afterwards. Just until, like, to give her something to do. <laughs> Probably until, like, Hampstead, Jamie Hayter comes back. I'm going to I'm going to go Tony Storm as well. I know that's a surprise. I know there's probably going to be a big snowstorm coming through because I picked Tony Storm. Ha 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 storm storm. But but I'm going to go Tony Storm too. As as hard as it for me to say this and as much as I would love to see Sheeta continue her reign. You guys made a lot of sense and I can agree with you. You know, this is a perfect setup for you know, Jamie Hader's return and a feud with Jamie Hader. Obvious return. So, we're going to get to another championship match. The AEW tag team titles are on the line in a fatal four-way tag team match. Ricky Stark's Big Bill defends against Roosh and Drillistico. They also face FTR and Malachi Black and Brody King. Fatal four-way tag team title match. Oh, do you I'm think at, Ricky Starks and Big Bill keeps the tag titles, or do we see a new tag team champion? A match that's going to last four fucking hours, I swear to God. Um, I I don't see Bill and, and, and Starks keeping the titles. I don't. I'm going to go – I'm actually go – if I'm picking Julia Fark to win, I'm going to go House of Black. Picking House of Black to get the tag team titles. Imagine them with all the gold. Well, minus Murphy, but. Well, I mean, that could be a setup, too. I mean, Malachi Black, Brody King get the tag belts. Julia Hart gets the women's championship. And you can have Buddy go after, you know, well, it wouldn't be the TNT title because of Christian holding it right now. But if Orange Cassidy ends up walking out of full gear, have him go after Orange Cassidy for the international title. Why not? Yeah, you know, there you go. You know, and uh, that could be a way to take the international title off of Orange Cassidy. But at the same time, you know, if they were to go to route, and again, I'm not saying they're going to go the route that I'm saying, you know, Swerve go after the international title. By all means, that's just basically dream booking and, and hopefully something to see. But that would take away from that pattern happening. Like they would, he would have to have a short reign with the international title. He would have to lose to somebody or when the timing is right, if they were to put swerve in that position of going after the international title, put the international title on somebody else, but they could do that. They could put all those belts on, on the house of black and make them a dominant force. Cause you look at it in AEW too. Okay. You have the comparisons of WWE and AEW. You get a WWE. Judgment Day, Bloodline, um, Damage Control. Like, you have heavy, dominant factions. And then you look at AEW, and yeah, I understand they have Bullet Club Gold, they have the BCC, but what, what faction's really dominant? Like, what faction gives you that dominance feeling? And the House of Black, with their aura... Alone, entrance, look, they can give that feel. The only bad thing I could see people doing with that, though, is making the comparison to the Judgment Day. Because they have almost the same look, somewhat of close entrance. Yes, the House of Black's entrance is much better than Judgment Day's. But the comparisons would be there. And that would suck. That would suck for the House of Black. Because they are, you look at it, they have a strong group. Even with Julia, because Julia is just getting better by the night in the ring. Like, she's getting up there. She is. That would be my only concern, is if they went that direction. Is that comparison to Judgment Day. So, Cam, who are you taking? So, so First of all, I'm not surprised this match got added to the card just because, you know, TK has a hard-on for multi-man matches. He does it every pay-per-view. Um, 
some of these people that are put in this match are kind of just, I feel like, thrown in there for the sake of keeping them relevant, like FTR, uh, uh, Jalistico, and Roosh. Like, they're kind of just thrown in there. But I kind of feel like the more obvious tag team to win this, in, in my eyes, is the Kings of the Black Throne, Malachi Black and Brody King. It would, it would be something different. And, and again, to your point, Mike, it'd be dope if they won the tag team titles and then Julia Hart, you know, either earlier, earlier in the night or later in the night, then wins the TBS championship. They would, they would be, they would, they would initially be back. They would be back on top yeah. after dropping the trios championships. So I wouldn't mind seeing that as far as the comparison to judgment day to me, I feel like, I don't know. Judgment Day to me kind of seems more like a parody of House of Black. House of Black seems a lot darker than Judgment Day does. It, and that's just how I see it. So, but no, I, I mean, yeah, they'll, they'll probably get comparisons to House of Black, I'm sure. Just like when when the House of Black first came and then the Judgment Day came, they were Judgment Day was getting compared to House of Black. So yep. the, the comparisons are gonna are gonna happen. Yeah, they'll um, flip those, they'll flip those roles. Yeah, that definitely. So but but I don't mind it. Uh, I definitely would want to see Malachi Black and uh, Brody as tag team champions. So I'm going to take the Kings of the Black Throne, even though it's probably far fetched. But I'm going to take them to win this match. So as much as I want to pick Malachi Black and Brody King to win the tag belts, as much as I would love to see it, as much as I love the idea of the House of Black holding all the gold. Yes, just throughout the whole fact of Buddy can go after the international title. We could see them because you look at it, they had the trios titles, okay? But the trios championships aren't as important as the tag team titles or the women's championship. Those are obviously bigger titles and the international title. The trios titles are for trios. And yeah, House of Black is that. But you want to put them in a much bigger position. Tag belts, international title women's championship and yeah the roles were reversed back then judgment day was getting compared to the house of black i'm still afraid of that comparison but and i'm going off on a tangent here i i kind of lost my frame of thought but i'm getting back into it so here we go as much as i would like to see malachi black and brody king win the tag belts we have a tag team match that we are going to talk about next and the reason why i'm picking ftr to win this match is because of the tag match that's happening, and that is Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega taking on the Young Bucks. Now, there's a little bit of stipulation going on in this match for Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho. I don't know because it wasn't fully confirmed. We don't know yet that if they win, they become number one contender for the tag belts. But if the Young Bucks do, if the Young Bucks win, they not only become number one contender for the tag team titles, but Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega have to break up. Reason why I'm picking FTR to win this match and regain the tag team titles is because this is a way for them to get back to the Young Bucks taking on FTR for the tag team titles. And it will happen at Revolution. Therefore, FTR wins the tag belts. And I'm jumping ahead of you guys before I get your thoughts and picks on this one. But I'm going Young Bucks beating. Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho. And my extra point is Kenny Omega turning on Chris Jericho. So there it is. One big prediction. So guys, who do you got? Young Bucks, Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega. I think I think I think it's gonna be the Golden Jets. They just got together and they're still in this. I guess feud with the hand or whatever the fuck they're called. Um, Don Callis's family or whatever. And I know like that match is happening on Dynamite for some reason and not full gear. Um, but I see that I see I see them still together beating the young bucks. Okay. Cam, who do you got? Once again, I just have to I have to point out the Golden Jets is a dumb name. Uh that oh, yeah. sounds like yeah. that sounds like something Jericho made up. I it just it reeks of Jericho. 
uh, aside from that, um, you know, there's this thing going around, you know, in the in the IWC, and and I think there there is a a bit of concern that you know some people are I think are just really growing tired of the young bucks. You know, every every time you turn around, you know, the bucks seem like they have to in, interject their, their themselves into these tag team title pictures and the, the tag team division and stuff like that. We, you know, we, we get it. We get it. We, they, they've had amazing matches in the past in Ring of Honor, New Japan, and AEW. We get it. But it's like this far in their careers, after, after everything they've accomplished, it's like they still feel the need to try to prove that they're, you know, quote unquote, the greatest tag team on the planet. You know what I mean? It's just it, it comes off as like corny. It's, it's really weird to me. You know, now I'm not I'm no fan of the Young Bucks. I, I just got. I just kind of grew tired of them. Like I grew tired of their ego. Uh, you know, the whole backstage segment on Dynamite, Kenny Omega, it, it was like he didn't even want to, Mike, you said it. it. It was like he didn't even want to be there. Yeah. He's just like, why am I here? I mean, he just looked, he looked like, he looked, he looked jet lagged. Like he was just like, I really don't care. I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pretty much. <laughs> like, this is, this like, I really don't why care. Are you doing this? Like, why, why? No, yeah. Whatever, don't want to fight you guys. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'm the third member of the elite. These are my best friends. Like, I, I have no real intention to prove that I'm a better tag team wrestler than the Young Bucks, especially with somebody who was my sworn enemy in Japan just a few years ago. Yeah, it makes no sense. It literally makes no sense. And. The gold that the the Golden Jets that that is a temporary tag team just for the sake of Jericho's whatever storyline. I don't know where this is going. I started off with Don Callis, then it's with Will Hobbs, then it, then then Big Show was injected into. I don't know where it's going. It's just it's just completely gone off the rails. So they're not going to stay together as a tag team. Now, I don't even if they did, and they did get a tag team title shot realistically nowhere in my brain do I actually believe that this makeshift tag teams winning the tag team titles it would make no sense at all if if that if that does happen oh like then then the tag team division is dead clearly because there's, there's no one else left viable or entertaining enough to win the tag team titles because that's pretty pathetic so yeah it's, it's a no-brainer for me the young bucks are going to win the championships um they're they're carving their own path to get back to FTR and and win win back the tag team titles, it's so blatantly obvious. So yeah, I'm going with the Young Bucks. And and here's here's the thing is, and Sean, you made out a good point. Like if, if Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho did lose, then what would they do with this whole Don Callis storyline? The thing is, is is we were supposed to get Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara to go on this tag team run to go after the tag belts and Sammy turned on Chris. They would have great tag team matches. And at the end of the match, we see them in their faces. Like you guys just had a good tag match. You won. Why are you guys in each other's faces? They were just arguing for no apparent reason at all. And we literally got Sammy Guevara joining Don Callis's family. Where has Sammy been since? You've been injured. I mean, I, I, I know that I, I think Tay is about to. I think they're about to have the baby. They're a couple months away from that. They announced that back in what July ish, somewhere around there, June. So July, August, September, October, November, five months. So I mean, it might be at the point where he's home with her, and you know, taking care of her. He also has a concussion though, too. That's that's what happened. But the the thing is, is is he could still be on TV without being physical. He can cut promos. He's just been gone. Like he, it's just like he doesn't exist. I honestly forgot he was even part of the Don Callis family before I reminded myself he was part of the Don Callis family. So if if anything, I think if they were to stick to the Don Callis storyline thing. It's going to be basically Chris Jericho doing it on his own because Kenny Omega and Don Callis, they, they kind of, in a small sense, it feels like they, those two alone grew away and it got more so on Jericho's side than Kenny Omega's. 
That's how I feel. Is it became more of a Chris Jericho focus than a Kenny Omega focus. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, we we could see Kenny Omega and Jericho win. And we continue this. We'll find out Saturday. Final match, gentlemen. AEW World Championship. MJF taking on Jay White. Now, real quick, I'm going to say this right now. With my bet going on, I got to pick MJF. Because I really don't want to get Bang Bang tattooed on me. I, I think that would be, you know... Uh, a hard, a hard thing, a hard thing to explain, you know, to somebody. If if I would get into a relationship somewhere down the future, <laughs> why do you have bang bang tattooed on you? You know, so because I'm bang bang. That's, yeah, that's just, <laughs> you know, um. So with that being said, I'm going to stick with MJF winning the the world title. So, so, so what does Jax have to get? What does Jax have to get? If there is a bet, so there is a bet. And I wrote it down in one of my notebooks. One of my nine notebooks that I have, I wrote it down somewhere on what his part of the bet is if he loses. He has to get tattooed. Because he has to get something tattooed on him. So, oh, he has to get MJF's devil. That's what he has to get. Thank you, Jax. You reminded me. He has to get the MJF devil. And see, here's the thing is, is if, if MJF wins, he gets the more badass-looking tattoo anyways. <laughs> you wouldn't want yeah, MJF's yeah. devil face tattooed on them. I mean, I might just do it for the shits and giggles of having MJF's devil tattooed on me. Right. Why not? But to get Bang Bang tattooed on me, I mean, that's going to be a fun thing to freaking explain if Jay White walks away with this belt. So, guys, honestly, just because are, of the... Are you going to get Bang Bang tattooed on your ass cheek? Well, the, that's the thing is, is if Jax were to pick for me to get it tattooed on my ass cheek, then so be it. I'm not afraid to get it done. Jeez. Full disclosure, I already have a tattoo on my left side. So, you know, if I have to get it on my right side, so be it. It'll just even out the tattoo count on my backside. So, uh, yeah, tramp stamp, bang, bang. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, so I want everything in me wants me to pick Jay White. Because I love Jay White, and because you'd have to get Bang Bang tatted on your ass. Um, Fucking a. Thanks. But I'm, gonna, but I'm gonna pick MJF because I know MJF's gonna win, and he's gonna go to at least like Revolution, and uh, maybe drop the title to Adam Cole at Revolution. So I will say this. The Adam Cole MJF thing has grown away from me. Like with everything going on right now, I feel like they are so far away from MJF and Adam Cole. Not saying they couldn't get there again because they can easily flip that switch and get there again. But with how many people are involved in this storyline, and I'm not just talking the kingdom and Roddy, I'm talking Samoa Joe. I'm talking Wardlow. I'm talking the other members of Bullet Club Gold. Like, there's so much that MJF has to basically endure. Where Adam Cole right now, he does, he's he's kind of fell from under my radar. Not saying it's not going to happen, but right now, I feel like he's kind of fell under my radar. But Cam, what do you got? MJF or Jay White? As much as I would like for it to be Jay White, because Jay White right now is just money. Like he's doing wonders right now in AEW. He made me a believer because at first I was like, I don't know about Jay White, but Jay White is money right now. I think eventually down the line, I think he will win the AEW World Championship, but that time is not now. I think right now he is going to. He, he's he's going to be that guy that's going to ha have amazing matches, but he's he's not the guy right now. Right now, the guy is MJF. Therefore, I'm taking MJF to retain the AEW World Championship. All right. Sounds good. Well, gentlemen, we have come to the end of the table spot here tonight. So, Sean. 
I have all your socials at the bottom. Everybody, make sure you head over to Sean's socials, hit that follow button, turn your notifications on, check out all the content that Sean puts out on his social medias, on the social pack, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call that. But where else can people find you on the networks here, Sean? You can find me right here every Sunday night, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 10 p.m. Eastern Time. The so and um for the table spot and Wednesdays uh we we've, we've been uh kind of what's it called um we haven't been like active but Wednesdays coming back we're doing IWG me and Will Gray that's where you can find me right here in River City Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time also next Sunday maybe you'll see Mike with a new tattoo hopefully. <laughs> It's, it's not going to happen that fast. I got to set the appointment up and everything. Yeah. I yeah. got to make sure the artist has time for me. And it, it, it's not going to be right on Sunday. I'm sure she can get me in that fast if I wanted to. But no, she would have to set me up for an appointment. So next Sunday, you wouldn't see Bang Bang Tattoo on me. It would probably be probably closer to like December time. It'd be a Patreon exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> So that being said, Camp, all your socials are on the bottom. Make sure you head over to Camp's Instagram, X, Twitter, whatever you want to follow him on TikTok. Hit that, hit that follow button, turn on notifications, check out all the great content Cam puts out on his social medias. And Camp, with that being said, where can everybody else find you on the networks here? You can find me right here on Every City Radio every single Sunday night with these two guys right here. With the table spot, and you can find me right here on River City Radio every single Wednesday night with the boom immediately following Dynamite with Will and this guy right here. And of course, on our sister page, Off the Top Media, every single Friday night with Scouse and with Sean, with not Sean, with Jamie, every single Friday night after SmackDown. All righty. And all my socials are on the bottom here. Instagram, TikTok, X, Twitter, Snapchat. People, don't be afraid to hit me up on the Snapchat. That's the only place where I'm not getting the follows at. So you can follow me on Snapchat. I do put stuff out on my Snapchat as well. Stuff you don't see on my Instagram, TikTok, or X. There's exclusive stuff over there. And no, no, I know what you're all thinking. It's not private. Be, stuff be, like be, 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 be. Different content on my Snapchat. But with that being said, you can find me here every Sunday night with these gentlemen on the table spot, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can find me every Wednesday night on Cam G's The Boom, following AEW Dynamite at 10, 15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can catch me here every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Prince's Movie Madness. And then you can catch me on Rivet City Red Zone every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. with Johnny H. And just a quick shout-out yet again to Jax. Jax, special co-hosted with me this morning, did a great, amazing job. Make sure to head over to his socials and everything, too. Hit the follow button, turn your notification on. Check out the product that he puts out on his socials as well. And everybody else here on Rivet City Radio and off the top media's Twitch and YouTube channel, hit the follow button. Check out all the great content going on. And as you see the scroll on the bottom, broadcasting notes, watch pain news on Monday. Check out nerdy news at, um, also on Monday. Sorry for the interruption. On Tuesday, watch nerdy news at 420 with Jax and Will. And check out NXT on tap. And then again on Wednesday night, Cam G's the boom. Gentlemen, do you have anything else for the viewers here tonight? Catch me, catch me at the Avian Expo in January. Do you have a date? Do you have a time? Plug it. Uh, whenever the fuck it happens. I, I don't know <laughs> the dates. When it, the Saturday that it happens. So that's the only damn going. It's too expensive. <laughs> With that being said, pay attention to Sean's social media. That great opportunity for you to go over to Sean's social medias and hit that follow button. And I'm sure he'll also. So, I'm asking the social pack will be sponsoring a yeah, wrestling yeah. match next month. Okay. Awesome. What match? Do you have a match yet? Do you have an announcement? Who's it going to be? Christ Style Pro, look out for that on their social medias. Uh, the, the match will happen December 8th. Um, 
So, yeah. Awesome. Well, like I always like to say, be kind to each other, take care of each other, be patient with each other. The world is not moving as fast as you think. Be good, everybody. Have a great week. We will see you all next Sunday right here on the Table Spot. We are out. Deuces.